1849 saw a great flurry of activity from Robert Schumann, writing a number of works which feature the horn, um, seeing him developing a new style of writing for a new style of instrument. Up until this point in time, Schumann had written predominantly for the natural horn in both his orchestral works, for example, the symphonies, and chamber music, for example, his 1843 Andante and variations for horn, two cellos and two pianos. The valve had been invented earlier in the 19th century, but the technology was certainly not taken up overnight. By the late 1820s, there is evidence of a number of notable performers and composers writing for the instrument. For example, Franz Schubert writing valved horn parts in Vienna for Joseph Levy in Alfdomstrom and Nachgesang in Valder. And Meifred, Joseph Meifred performing a work of his own composition in the opening concert of the Parisian Society des Concerts du Conservatoire. Berlioz's travels to Germany in the early 1840s opened up his mind to the possibilities of valved instruments. A number of the practitioners of the early valve horn incorporated aspects of hand technique from the earlier instrument, but by the time we get to Schumann's late 1840s output, I'm doubtful that Austro-Germanic horn players would be approaching their repertoire in the same way as the early valve horn players in France were. This bumper year saw Schumann composing at least three important works for the horn. The Five Hunting Songs, Opus 137, for male voice choir and horn quartet, comprising three natural horns and a fourth valved horn part, the roll within a section that, given its low tessitura, most benefits from the addition of valves. The gloriously virtuosic Conchestuck for Four Horns, Opus 86, and the piece I'm performing as part of this project, the Adagio and Allegro in A-flat, Opus 70. Schumann must have been clearly deeply inspired by the relatively new valved horn, given that the Adagio and Allegro and Conchestuck were written within the span of barely one week in February 1849. These are highly challenging works, especially on nascent technology. There is an apocryphal story of Edward Poe, principal horn of the Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra and first horn in the premiere of the Conscious Took in 1850, deciding to reject his valve horn in favour of the more dependable hand horn. Whilst this story appears to be an urban myth, it's indicative of how tricky these works are and how tempting it can be to revert to equipment and techniques that are more familiar. The instrument I've chosen for this performance is one of my Ullmann rotary horns. Leopold Ullmann, a Viennese maker, was active from around about the 1830s to the 1870s. So without any other information, it's hard to give a date for this instrument other than roughly mid 19th century. So perfect for Schumann of this date. It's a very fluid instrument, it's a very beautiful instrument, both to play, but also in some of the details, such as the offset second valve and engraved valve caps. But it's really quite delicate and fragile. In that respect, it really matches the grand piano by the Viennese maker Conrad Graf we're using, dating from 1826. Both instruments have a certain lightness, as well as marked variants of timbre in their different ranges. I find with these early rotary valve instruments that there is a certain ceiling on the louder dynamics. You can't quite get that later style of immense sound, which of course makes them perfect for this sort of intimate vocal chamber music. Again, this is a work that was in Dennis Brain's repertoire and recorded by him, but I must say that I think my favourite recording and the one which I think is most inventive and expressive is that made by Casals in 1961, a live performance. In it, Casals is 85 years old, and by this date, the flexibility in which he approaches the work is just jaw-dropping. Mm -hmm. 